I want to integrate this triple integral. After first setting it up as a triple integral, an iterated integral with no substitution, I then want to perform what I, I hope to be a good substitution that makes it easier to integrate. So I'm integrating over a region G, z minus y squared xy dv, and G is a region enclosed by, enclosed by four planes, x equals 1, x equals 3, z equals y, z equals y plus 1, and two hyperbolic cylinders, y equals 2 over x and y equals 4 over x. So, first thing I'm supposed to do is to imagine this as an iterated integral um, without a substitution, right? Just in rectangular coordinates without any change. So I want to think about my bounds here. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is write them down as inequalities. I know that x will be between 1 and 3. I know then that z will be between y and y plus 1. And then finally, I know that y is between two hyperbolic cylinders. All right, so there's my region G. G is enclosed by these things, and that was supposed to be a 3. Okay, so I should draw my region in space to set up the triple integral, but I'm going to choose to integrate in this order. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I can tell very easily what order of integration I'm going in the z-axis. The, plane, the planes y, z equals y, and z equals y plus 1 are parallel planes where this one is below this one. And then the region in the xy plane I would need to draw as a projection is, is really easy to understand. So 1, 2, 3 in the x direction, and I'll have those two vertical lines. And then my two hyperbolic cylinders, so y equals 2 over x. Well, at 1, I get a 2. 4 over x, I get out a 4. And at 3, I get a 2 thirds. And at 4, I get a 4 thirds. So I get this, you know, these rational functions, these hyperbolas. There's my re region r in the xy plane. And I can imagine z as the axis that's coming straight up out of the board towards the camera. Right, this, oh, not, that's y. Okay. z coming straight up out of the board. And then the plane z equals y is the plane that touches the x-axis and comes through like a slice like this. So I can imagine a cylinder coming up out of that region and slicing it with this plane. So I have that same kind of region above it. And then I slice it with a parallel plane that's one unit higher. And so the solid I'm dealing with is this region dragged out but sliced by two parallel planes at a 45 degree angle. And so if I think about a ray in increasing order of z coming straight up out of the board, it would hit the plane at z equals y and then the plane at z equals y plus 1. And so there I have it. I have my bounds for z. And to find the bounds for x and y, I can use this projection. I first hit the lower hyperbola and then the upper one. And then the bounds for x are from 1 to 3. And so here is my triple integral with no substitution. And I think we could evaluate that, right? There'd be a trade-off, I think. The integration here is not hard, but I have to multiply it out, and I'd have some interesting um, bounds to plug in. So my goal now is to do a substitution that makes the integration easier. And the trade-off is I'm going to have to compute the Jacobian, right? I'm going to have to reevaluate my bounds and, and work a little harder before the integration. Well, if I look at my bounds, x is definitely going to stay between 1 and 3. There's not much I can do there. But I see a z minus y here, and if I take y away from everything in this one, I get a z minus y. And so now I have z minus y is between 0 and 1. Those are constant bounds. That's nice. It's on the inside of a function that, that feels like something I might want to do a substitution on. I see an x times y here, and cleverly, if I multiply it, all three pieces of this inequality by x, I get that xy is between 2 and 4. And so I think I see a substitution that I could try. 
I'm not going to do anything interesting with the x. I could, I could in fact, just let x be x, but I'm going to let u equal x just because I'm used to using u's, v's, and w's on these substitution problems. I'm going to let v equal z minus y, and I'm going to let w equal x times y. And so right away, my integrand gets easier, right? Because now I have a v squared w multiplied by the absolute value of a Jacobian, and then my new variables du, dv, dw, in whatever order you want to do them in, because in this substitution, well, u is between 1 and 3, because u equals x. v is between 0 and 1, and w is between 2 and 4. Right, because these are constant bounds, Fubini's theorem applies, and I could literally do the integration in whatever order I chose. So I've chosen u, v, w as my order. So I can go and put bounds on this triple integral. So now I just need to compute, a Jaco compute the Jacobian. And so I need to think about my substitution, u equals x, v equals z minus y. And finally, w equals xy. Because what I really need are equations say x equals, y equals, and z equals, so that I can compute the Jacobian. All right, well, x equals u, and so that one's pretty nice. And in fact, those are going to be beautiful partials to take. Um, I'm going to choose to solve this equation for y, because it tells me that y is equal to w over x, and x is equal to u, so I know that y is w over u. And again, not hard partials to deal with there. And then finally, this equation would tell me that z is v plus y, so that's v plus and y is w over u. So now we can compute our Jacobian. The top row will be the partials of x with respect to u, v, and then w. So the partial with respect to u is clearly one, and then zeros. That's going to be the best thing ever because now I can expand over that top row and I only am going to have to worry about the little cofactor matrix down here in the bottom corner. All right, so now I need to take the partial of y with respect to u, v, and w. And again, not bad derivatives to have to take. With that plus v only one of these spots even changes. So expanding of that top row, I'd have one times the determinant of this two by two, which this should be a one over u there, which I hope I said out loud, but if I didn't, it's a one over u. Um, when I, because partial with respect to w here, right, I have one over u times w. Okay, so I just need to take the determinant of this little two by two. So I get a minus one over u. And there's my Jacobian. Coming back to this board, now that's a minus one over u in there, and the absolute value says just call that a one over u. Okay, nicely enough, I know u's positive, so that, that helps me out a little bit too. So now I just need to integrate that. So let's see, that's an integral from two to four, then zero to one and one to three, actually in the other order v squared w, and then times 1 over u, du, dv, dw. And now we're ready to integrate. All right, so I need an antiderivative for 1 over u, which is the natural log of the absolute value of u, but I know u's positive, so I'm just going to write a u there. I'd have the natural log of 3 minus the natural log of 1, which is just the natural log of 3. I'm going to go on and imagine that as a constant factored out front. All right. Finding the antiderivative of v squared, I'm going to have a 1 3rd v cubed. I'm going to go and write the 1 3rd out front. And then from v equals 0 to 1, well, if I plug that in, I'll just get a 1 with that 1 third already out front. So now I have 1 third the natural log of 3. 
and then an indefinite integral from 2 to 4 of w dw. Evaluating this from 2 to 4, I would end up with an 8 minus 2 on the inside, or 6, times that 1 third, and I end up with 2 times the natural log of 3. Or if you wanted to, you could write that as the natural log of 9. And there's our nice, happy solution. So we started off with a region in space that was trapped, two planes cutting through a hyperbolic cylinder. We turned that into a region in UV space that was a rectangular prism and then got to integrate a much simpler integrand.